Hey everyone and welcome to Steam Deck News. We have a massive update from the Steam Deck team and it's absolutely awesome. So let's dive in but first a warning. If you are in desktop mode you are going to get stuck in a boot loop if you do this update. So make sure you are in game mode or if you do get stuck then follow the instructions in the recovery options which I'll link to in the description below. Okay let's dive into this massive update. First off, we have a new lock screen feature. Now you can add lock screens to your startup, switching desktop mode and wake modes. As you can see on the screen here, you can get to these settings in the team settings security option. And you have to be quite quick on entering the pin here to secure it as it does time out just a couple of seconds. So if you pause for more than a second, it will not recognize the pin. So make sure you pick a pin number that you can enter quickly. Localized keyboards have been added. You now have 21 languages and layouts for keyboards, as you can see here in the settings, keyboards and active keyboards. If you have multiple keyboards active, you can use the globe key down in the bottom left here to switch that over. Now here's a big one for those that use third party launchers or need to open websites to authorize games. There is now support for multiple windows within one application or game. Now when you're in a game, if you hit the Steam button in game, if there are multiple windows, you now have the option to switch between them so you can get to those browsers that suddenly get hidden. This is absolutely massive, especially for Epic Games that launch the browser to authenticate. Looking at you, Tiny Tina's one. Now I'm not huge on achievements in general, but this will excite the achievement hunters out there. The achievements page has had a redesign, making it a lot faster to load and easier to navigate. Let us know if you're an achievement hunter and how many achievements you have in the comments below. There's also a new achievements dropdown, which allows players to quickly compare stats against friends. My Steam name is from the olden days, so it's Matt a little mart. I'll leave that in the description below if you guys want to add me so you can see how bad my stats are. Add friend pending requests are now combined into a single page to make it a lot easier to handle those requests. They've added some logic to detect and notify users when micro SD cards don't match their advertised storage size and specs. So if you've bought a cheap SD card and it's not the size that it says it is, it will let you know. They've also fixed an issue which really bugged me when I was testing out some remote play that the Steam and the Steam menu buttons don't work when using the remote play, which really messes you up when you're trying to use the Steam shortcuts. And they've improved performance for players with very large game libraries once again. So if you've got this massive game library that these guys seem to keep targeting, let us know whether this has yet again improved your performance. Now that was the client updates, we do have a huge OS update as well as part of this. So here we go. They've added messaging when a charger doesn't meet the minimum requirements. So if you are using a third party USB-C charger that will only trickle charge, it will now notify you. Here's a big one and I haven't found a game that I've managed to push over 60 frames per second yet that's installed currently. So I will have to go and hunt one of the better performing games out but you have now got an uncapped frame rate setting in the quick access performance menu. So let me know if you've managed to clock any games over 60 frames per second and what that game is, and maybe we can showcase it here on the channel. Not sure on this one, but they've added half rate shading experimental option to the quick access menu performance, forcing two by two variable rate shading into existing games for power savings. Somebody with a bit of technical knowledge about how this works should let us know in the comments below in layman's terms what that actually means, along with adding FTPM support, which enables Windows 11 installation. Now, I thought this was already available by Boot, but this is certainly going to make these Windows Dual Boot fans very happy. They've added a new button combo to hold down the Steam three dots menu and volume down to reset PD contract in the cases where Steam gets stuck due to an incompatible Type-C device. Now I've not come across this, let us know if it's an issue that you guys have seen and what Reset PD contract actually means. 
They've updated the power LED to dim a few seconds after the power supply connection so that it's better in dark environments so you no longer have a glowing bright LED in nighttime charging. They've improved compatibility for a number of Type-C docks and power supplies so hopefully if like me you are using a USB-C dock to have a mouse and keyboard or put a display up, the charging has never been great through that USB dock, so hopefully that now improves it. Battery life in idle and very low usage scenarios has been improved as well as improved stability. So hopefully if those of you have been using your deck as much as I have, it won't randomly crash on you so often. They fixed multiple issues where the touchscreen does not work after some boots. Compatibility with some SD cards when used at boot devices. Now this one I thought I was getting crazy but it does look like it was a bug after all where they fixed extra haptic clicks when pressing on trackpads. Lastly, again somebody with the technical background can let us know what this really means but they fixed the ACPI error spew in the kernel. Now doesn't sound good but it's good that they fixed it. There we go, that's the hefty Steam Deck news update for today. Let us know in the comments below if there are some fixes that you are on the lookout for. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.